Welcome to the Sleepwire Show. It's week 10 in the 2018 fantasy season. Officially, the playoff push, I think. If you play until week 13 or 14, uh, this is most definitely it. Even if you're on the wrong side of the bubble, though, even if you have a losing record right now, don't worry. You can still play spoiler. You could still maybe even get in, depending on the record of your league. So don't give up. Don't be a bum. Don't tank. We are here at the Sleepwire Show, and we are going to help you win in week 10 we're going to look at the trends we've seen so far this season we're going to give you the best waiver wire targets this week and we're going to talk about who to trade for for the rest of the season here because that trade deadline for most leagues is coming up around thanksgiving time so you may have a couple weeks here to make those last minute adjustments for your championship run let's jump into the show With me today is Jason and George. I don't know what I want to talk about before we talk about football today. Uh, anything anything catch your eye or make you laugh this weekend? I absolutely love the homage that uh, Michael Thomas did by paying tribute to uh, Joe Horn. That was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Joe Horn had that, uh, that stunt planned for like three or four weeks, but every time he scored, it was the opposite end zone of where the phone was. So he had to wait until he scored in the end zone with the phone, where Mike Thomas had one in each end zone, so it didn't matter. Yeah, you know, that shows you how not, how unintelligent some of these guys can be. After the first (laughs) week, wouldn't you put phones in both end zones? Right. I want to know where he got a flip phone. That's what I want to know. He said he bought it at a liquor store. I was going to say, he he probably got it from my dad. (laughs) The Joe Horn, uh, actually, I, I read that he saw... He saw this moment when he was uh, working out or something, and it brought a tear to his eye. He felt truly honored that uh, that Michael Thomas would do such a thing. So, yeah, it was a good moment in football this week. Uh, I don't know if anybody else out there is a gamer, but I was stuck playing Red Dead Redemption all week. <laughs> I've been hearing weekend. about this, yeah. I've been it's, hearing about it's, this. It's brutal. My wife hates it. <laughs> so it's like a, it's like a, a Western... Game? Yeah, it's uh, like what it's is like it? Grand Theft play. Auto meets Wild West. Is it made by Rockstar? Is it like an open world game like they do? It is made by Rockstar, yeah, and it is open world. Uh, I mean, just like uh, with Grand Theft, there's main l- missions, uh, but then there's a lot of side missions. So uh, ways to go get gold, rob stagecoaches, just kind of pillage and plunder. Can you bang a hooker and then beat her up afterwards and take your money back? I have not seen that part yet, but I'm pretty sure if you go to the saloon, you can get hookers. I haven't tried. Okay. I've been playing a lot with my kids awake, so I do the kinder, gentler <laughs> version of Red Dead Redemption. I do missions. Well, you like uh, go rounding up cattle and building fences? Is that what you're doing? A little, a little bit. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. So when, when I played Grand Theft Auto, my kids loved Grand Theft Auto because they liked the cars and just driving around the city. Like they thought Grand Theft Auto was a... A PG game of driving. Right. Little did they know what I was doing after dark. <laughs> but let's get to the games. We're gonna talk about what we saw. Thursday night football. This 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 game. There was so much interesting stuff in the 49ers and Raiders games. Let's start with the Raiders. I think the team has given up. I said last week that they played with a lot of effort and a lot of energy when they played the Colts. This game was completely the ob- opposite. Uh this was really, really bad. Players have left the team through trade. They released Bruce Irvin. I think they should fire their defensive coordinator after this week. Uh, they they lost their left tackle, Colton Miller, which led to six sacks on David Carr. And they couldn't convert on third down, three of 12. Everything about this team, the Raiders right now, looked awful. I don't know what to do with the players. The only guys that we have been starting are Jalen Richard. Uh, Jarrett Cook and Doug Martin. And I don't know if I even feel good about those guys for the rest of the season. I, I'm okay starting Cook. I'm okay starting uh, the, the running backs. E- even even Doug Martin, I'm okay starting him. It, it, as long as it's a flex. You're, you're not, you know, he's not your RB1 or RB2. Uh, if it's a good matchup, I don't mind flexing Doug Martin. But outside of those three players, I'm not starting anybody on the on the Raiders. You say matchup, so, but the thing is, this this was their, in my opinion, their last good matchup. 
I don't see a good matchup coming up in the rest of the season here for these guys. Yeah, I think so. I Richard, I think is gonna is a decent check down. I have a tough time. Tight ends are so bad that you probably still play Cook, who's ha- been having a good year up to this point. But he's the only guy there that you're scared of in any route now. So they're going to take him away and try and make old man Nelson and couldn't get along in Pittsburgh Bryant actually beat you, and I don't think they can do it. I think you'll be able to use the running backs at the Cardinals. I think you're, you're going to get blown out next week by the Chargers, so you'll be able to use Richard and Cook. Um, Ravens, I, I don't trust nobody. Uh, the Chiefs, I trust uh, Richard and Cook. Steelers, same thing. Uh, Bengals, same thing. It's it's one of those things where I think the teams that are they're going to play is going to get up quick, and the game script is just going to be passing the ball a lot. All right, so the Raiders, to me, they fall in a low confidence level right now. I'm going to try oh, to yeah. like pick some teams and say, okay, I have high confidence in them. I have medium confidence and low confidence. This is a low confidence team. You're counting on garbage time with these guys. So, yeah, it's a desperation start for most of them, I think. On the other side, there's a, a bright spot. Some dude named Nick Mullins. Boy, his after-game interview was just a aw shucks kind of moment. Just This guy is just a team player. I was reading that he had practiced all the scripted plays in an empty stadium every week. Like, who is this guy? He's like, he's like the uh, all-American high school football quarterback. I love it. You know, I like that stuff, but man, it 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 just it smells of like Jameis Winston comes in before everybody else and leaves after everybody <laughs> else and. You know, when you don't have much to say about a quarterback because he's like your third stringer, but you have to throw him out there, you look for a story and, you know, his story is, well, he comes in after the games or before the games and he he runs the script by himself. And meanwhile, where was Bill Belichick to record those things? Like, if he's running the game, (laughs) if he's running the game script in an empty stadium, the opposite coach should have been watching that yeah, so he knows little, what the scripted plays are. Get a little scout, little drone in there. Just watch him. No kidding. This guy, this guy's blowing it for the team. He's giving away all the plays. He's the giving dope. them all away. Oh, man. All right. But look, this guy, he came out through three touchdowns. Granted, it was against the Raiders. Granted, they were playing literally no defense. They couldn't do anything on defense. So <laughs> people are going to be looking at this Nick Mullins cat thinking, well, he probably will get the start. Because Beathard hasn't been doing much. Now, if you look at them and, and, and compare them, I think they're kind of the same sort of guy. Like, Mullins may be a little bit more accurate, but it's mostly just short, intermediate throws. He was making good throws. He had a couple impressive ones, but I don't think he's got a strong arm. So he's not going to bring a lot of value to uh, to guys like Goodwin or anything like that. Um, it was nice to see Garcon get involved, Kittle still. But is this this any bright spot for the rest of the offense if this guy plays the rest of the year? Because this team has gone through, like, I mean, with Mosert, it's almost like the Chargers a couple years ago. They have just been destroyed by injury this year. So you're getting a lot of fantasy value out of guys you've never heard of who might be good for, like, a week or maybe two. What do you What do you guys make of this team for the rest of the season here? So rest of the season's rough, but they play the Giants who have given up. Because they've already they traded snacks and apple, and then they get their buy, and then they play the Bucks, who can't stop anyone for anything. So, like two out of the next three weeks, they're going to score a ton of points, and the the third week just happens to be a buy. So I think Giants going forward, man, fire up your Mullins and uh, probably Garcon, and at the Bucks uh, again until the Bucks stop anyone for anything. I'd fire up Mullins in both of those games. Look, in a 12-team league, I'm not firing up Mullins for nothing. Uh, maybe in two quarterback leagues, you know, maybe you got someone to buy. Maybe I'll start him over Derek Carr. I like Burita going forward. Uh, he's been struggling. He hasn't had more than 65 rushing yards in six straight games. A lot of that's been injury, but I think a lot of that was also we all expected and seen our – most are coming on and looking better, but now that most are out of the way, I mean, what do they have left? Alfred Morris, Juice Check, Burita's going to get more work than both of them. He keeps having injuries and not getting healthy. They keep throwing him out there because they have nobody else. 
And it seems like if they would just let him get right, maybe he'd start playing well again. Well, we didn't, I mean, he didn't get injured this week. We did, We never got the alert saying that he's gone to the tent or he's gone to the sideline. And I actually think they pulled him in the second half because his game was so out of reach at that point. They didn't want to risk it. So they were giving Alfred Morris all the work. You know, we always talk the most about the Thursday night game, I think, because we had the most time to bitch about it and, it. and, and look at it. Yeah. And uh, it's there's always weird stuff that happens on Thursday. A game that there was some other weird stuff going on in this Bears Bills game. So uh, the Bears defense redeemed itself for me this week. Scored points finally, a couple of touchdowns, uh, but they were slow to start on offense and never really got it going too good on offense. And we kind of talked last week. I think I asked the question. I said, "When does uh, when does Trubisky turn into Blake Bortles?" I think we saw some of it this week. He didn't have to throw much, but when he did. It wasn't that great. So uh, going forward for the Bears, I think I wouldn't panic too much with Trubisky. They've got easier defenses to play against coming up, uh, and they're going to be in some pretty tougher games, pretty tough games coming up. So I think they're going to be forced to throw the ball more. This was totally a Howard game strip, game script and not a Cohen game script. Cohen only had two point, some odd points in a PPR fantasy this this week. Uh, but going forward, like you said, playing against the Lions, the Vikings, the Lions, the Giants, and the Rams, they're going to have to pass a lot. So I, I'm still high on Tariq Cohen going forward. I still like Trubisky. I think a lot of this was the game script. I mean, you got two defensive touchdowns from the from the uh, Bears defense. So he didn't have to do a lot. He didn't look great, but he didn't have to do a whole lot to, to win this game. It, it He... Yeah, don't make the mistakes that would kill him to get get the Bills back into it. Like the Bills could do anything. Fun stat right now, the Bills on the year have three pick sixes and three passing touchdowns all year long. Let's talk about some of the good teams. We, we cleared out a lot of the bad ones so far. Chiefs and the Browns game. Uh, so Mahomes was great again. Some key injuries on the Brown defense, though. So monitor this because that had been a, a very good defense in terms of takeaways. So far, I think they led the league going into this week in takeaways. Uh, now, with that defense hurting a little bit, obviously they got lit up by hometown boy Travis Kelsey and uh, Tyree Kill. Another tough week for him. He was shadowed by a pretty good corner. That guy left the game. He kind of got back up. So he's still a good player. We saw this game from Duke Johnson that I don't know if I can believe in. The coaching changes... Mayfield's getting banged up every week. That offensive line is protecting him. The accuracy is getting better, but his pass catchers are still dropping a lot of balls. I don't know if it's so much skills on this team. I think it's just a culture thing again, and I hate to go back with this Browns. You know, it's always the culture of the Browns. It's always, like, behind-the-scenes nonsense going on. I want to get away from players on this team right now, to be honest. Even Njoku and Landry. And, and Chubb, like, I'm kind of getting ready to bail on this team before they start really blowing up because they don't have an easy schedule for the rest of the season. Yeah, they, after the Falcons, which is next week, they, they've they gone through their easy part of their schedule and they've, none of their offensive weapons, save for maybe Chubb, have looked very good. Uh, the one thing you could be encouraged about under Greg Williams uh, is Duke Johnson having, you know, nine for nine for 78. Uh, it's kind of what we expected when they named Chubb and they shipped Hyde, where they finally gave Duke only one rush, but a bunch of work in the passing game. And then Nick Chubb ran the ball when it was time to run. So it's it's what you want to see or what you thought we would see, but it's the Browns, so we're not sure that they keep doing it. And it took so long to see it. Like, I know, Jason, you like to see things a couple weeks in a row before you buy into it. I, nobody was starting Duke Johnson this week unless you were desperate, unless you were killed by buys. And if you did, great, you hit it. But are you starting him next week? Like, do you feel comfortable at all with that? Well, listen, uh, and again, depending on buys, I do. I start – because here's what we had. We had a, a total coaching change, and the first week they used Duke Johnson properly – now, it didn't help the Browns win this game. Nobody thought they would. But, uh, you know, as far as game strip goes, we 
we know the Browns are going to be down in almost every game, right? So it should game script wise, Duke should get the ball in the passing game a lot. So I would start him next week. Um, I, I I would start him next week. I mean, the Falcons just gave up a, a passing touchdown to Capri Bibbs, and now you're talking about Duke Johnson getting to play the Falcons defense. That Falcons defense is almost as bad as the Bucs. It's playing almost as bad as the Browns did this game. You think they can do okay against Falcons, though, huh? I think the Falcons are going to blow them out. Yeah. You know, the Falcons are going to crush this team. But offensively, that Falcons defense, they've they've lost defensive linemen. They've lost a bunch of linebackers. They lost a lot out of their secondary. Like, they are playing guys off the street on that defense. And – Especially pass catching running backs have had a good amount of success against the Falcons over the weeks, so I think they're going to be okay. I like Duke Johnson as the best player next week on this team, even over Chubb. But l- listen, would I be surprised if if the Browns brown me? No. Would you trade Duke Johnson right now for a player like Austin Eckler, who had a couple of bad weeks? I don't think I would do it for Eckler, um, unless I am the. Uh... The Melvin Gordon owner, then I would absolutely do it. Yeah, the problem with trading Eckler is he's a handcuff. Like, he's one Melvin Gordon injury away from being a starter on a decent team. Yeah. Okay. So you you wouldn't sell him for Duke Johnson? I wouldn't. I would not sell Eckler okay. for, for Duke Johnson, no. All right. All right. Let's talk about the Dolphins and the Jets. Jesus, was this a great game. I mean, when you go to the NFL film library and, and sort by – most popular, highest rated, most views. Dolphins Jets Week Nine, twenty eighteen, is going to be at the top of that list. Woo! Listen, it, it was a matchup between Darnold and Osweiler. I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> remember <laughs> those? Remember those old NFL films with that guy with the deep voice? Yes. And, you know they do yes. them for the Super Bowls now, and it's like I want. I would almost pay that guy <laughs> to come do this game. Just for the sarcasm value, so they had to they had to move the Patriots and Green Bay game to eight o'clock because it, they did not want to get it overshadowed by the Dolphins and the Jets. <laughs> Using that flex scheduling, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Honestly, the highlights of this game could be that one catch by Quincy Anunua. That was the only thing that made any highlight reels of this game. The rest of it was rough. Let's break down the Jets first. This is another team that I have very, very low confidence in, just like the Raiders. I think their season is over. Uh, at this point in the year, a lot of teams are like, okay, we're done. No, all right. We're not going to go too hard and try to hurt ourselves. I think this team is done. I think the coach might get fired, but I think they're going to keep rolling Darnold out there. With that being said, I don't know if there's a lot of fantasy value to really be gleaned from this team. I know we're we're high on a new one before, but I don't know if I'm comfortable starting a new one anymore. Um, no, nah, it, it it comes with peaks and waves. Uh, yeah, yeah. With with throughout the year on who you feel comfortable. Like earlier in the year, he was hot, so you had to play the hot hand. Right now, you just don't feel confidence. There's nothing on the Jets that you feel confident starting, unless, like you said, Crowell misses significant time, and then you you feel good about McGuire. Um, but other than that, there's nothing there to talk about. I mean, Chris Herndon's been kind of putting together a couple of games, and maybe that continues. Maybe a, a decent floor in PPR, but standard-wise, I'd probably stay away. On the Miami side, I don't know what's 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 going on. I, I don't know why Frank Gore carried the ball 20 times. I don't know why Parker disappeared. I mean, I do know why Parker disappeared, but I can't believe that anyone was surprised by it. If you weren't surprised by it, then shame on you. So if you wasted a waiver pick on Parker, sorry, I wouldn't keep him. Um, this is another team that I don't know what they're doing. To me, it's all coaching. And the fact that Rashad Jones just left the game, took himself out of the game, what does that say about the locker room of the Dolphins? Yeah, I, I, I was looking to see if there was anything that was said about that today. The coach had no clue why he pulled himself. Uh, there, it's really not a whole lot being said about it. They, they said um, they're handling, the, the, handling the, it internally, which means, yeah, they're not going to tell you anything. Exactly. Uh, I know this past off season, uh, they went through and they, they cleaned out the locker room a little bit. They, they got rid of some guys that were giving them headaches. They brought in some veterans that they thought would be able to help the locker room and Frank Gore and Danny Amendola. And I'm not sure that 
and it's no fault of their own. I don't think it's working. Um, I think there's still some bad apples that need to be just removed from the team personally. Um, and I do agree it's time for a coaching change in Miami. As much as I hate to say that, because I do like the coach, I do like Gase, uh, I just don't think I don't think he's got it. I think he's lost this team. Even though they're 5-3, and three, uh, they still somehow have a shot at a playoff spot, which is just absolutely mind-numbing because that's a terrible team. But... I think it's time for the coach to to go, unfortunately. Yeah, so Rashad Jones, it's weird, too, because, like, you'd think when the Bills guy quit halfway through the season, like, they were getting blown out. Like, you're winning this game, and Rashad Jones is like, yeah, man, I'm done. I'm tired of all this winning. <laughs> I mean, we can't do the joke about quitting in the middle of the show again. Uh, unfortunately, we did that already. <laughs> But um, <laughs> I'm taking myself out. Yeah, it's just weird. Like this, this is level of dysfunction that I, I would expect to see on the Raiders, and it's scary for me. If I own any Miami guys, um, man, I don't know what to do with them for the rest of the season. It's another low confidence team. Like uh, just Drake, maybe as a flex, but that's it. That's really it. And who knows, with with the offensive line took a hit as well with Laramie Tunsil out. So that doesn't help the quarterback situation, doesn't help the fact that you have Osweiler starting. You know what? If Tunsil was out, I guarantee you Rod, Rashad Jones pulled himself out so he could get that gas mask pot smoking thing that he had, uh, that Tunsil <laughs> had right before the draft where that video came out. He's <laughs> like, we're going to go hit that. Oh my God! There's it's just weird. I don't know about the Dolphins. Uh, we'll we'll talk about them probably on the Friday show, and I'm sure we'll get some questions on them in the mail sack this Wednesday when we take your questions live. Who to start? Who to sit? They are in by in week eleven, so prepare for that. I guess Vikings and Lions. Now this is a team that I'm starting to have higher confidence in with the Vikings. They are looking better every week. Those lines are looking better every week. The the sack amount they put on, I mean, they just sacked. They, they just sacked. They basically, what did they te- They basically teabagged Stafford. They gave him so much sack <laughs> this week. Ten sacks. I mean, if you're if you're running their defense out, that's ten points right there. Usually, you get a point per sack. So if you're if you're owner of anybody on the Vikings, I say it's good. It's looking good. People are going to be excited about Cook. They're going to see that seventy yard run. Look at his stat. Other than that, he would have had 19 yards on 10 attempts. So my idea or my thought is they continue to use Murray and Cook. Do you guys agree with this or do you see Cook taking over the whole job after the bye in week 10? No, I think it's going to be split time. Because Murray's still still playing well. He's still got a touchdown this week, right? So I, I think they'll share. I think they'll split snaps. I don't think... It's going to be a complete running back by committee. Um, Cook is the more of the explosive of the two running backs. I think I seen a stat earlier today on Twitter that said uh, Cook was clocked at going over 22 miles an hour on that 70 run touchdown or that 70 yard run, which was the fastest to date uh, this year in the NFL, faster than Tyree Kill, faster than anybody else. So he, he he's got the speed back. Um, I, he's just the more explosive of the two. I think you're looking at maybe a 65-45 split, or 35 split, rather. Um, I don't think it's going to be a complete running back by committee. I think they're going to give Cook more opportunity because, let's face it, he's the better of the two backs. I'd like to see him on the field at the same time. I'd like to see them use Cook as as more of a Tyree Kill type player out of the backfield. I think that's where he excels. If you see them starting to use Cook as a pass catcher on the sides, little screens, that's where his value is, I think. That's where his skill set fits in best. But I don't think you're dropping Murray. I think you could still start Murray on a week-to-week basis. I think they're going to need to play Murray on a week-to-week basis because their schedule upcoming is not exactly easy. It doesn't get easy till toward the end of the season, but they've got three very big games against the Bears, the Packers, and the Patriots, and they're going to want to win those, and I think they're going to want to keep the ball away from the Packers and the Patriots. So you may see a good dose of Murray just to kind of grind out those games and kill the clock and keep possession. Detroit, i got to give them credit for one thing. They protected Megatron's record. They held Thielen 
to only 22 yards. So for what it's worth, there you go. Well, I think that has a lot to do with one Matt Patricia being the Bill Belichick style coach where he wants to take your only what your main weapon away. Uh, so with Diggs out, it just shows Thielen's a great wide receiver, but he needs somebody on the opposite side that can draw some coverage. Yep, completely agree. You mentioned, Jason, trading four digs either a week or two weeks ago. I don't remember how far back it was. I want to give you credit for two or three weeks ago. Um, but now more than ever, I mean, dude sat out with hurt ribs. They got to buy. Somebody's probably hurting this week or next week. They're going to need to fill in. So, man, if you can get digs at this point, that's a very good trade, I think, for the rest of the season. Another guy we talked about trading for uh, over the past couple weeks was Galladay. Another down week for Galladay. Only one catch last week, three this week. I think Detroit needs to change their offense up a little bit, start doing some new things. Uh, I was reading an article from uh, one of the Detroit newspapers that suggested they do some more pre-snap, pre-snap motion and movement. They're not doing a lot of that. So they're not catching anybody off guard with their defense. Um, do you guys see still feeling good about trading for Galladay for the rest of the season? Uh, let's So they got the Bears twice and the Panthers, the Rams – the Bills have a good defense, and then they play the Vikings again. So looking at that schedule, he has all the talent in the world, but, oh man, they took they took Tate out of there, so now Galladay's getting more attention. I am a sell on Kenny Galladay at this point. Okay. I'm a buy. I, I like his matchup with the Panthers. I like his matchup. Uh, love his matchup with the Rams because I expect that to be a high-scoring game. And uh, the Bears is going to be a tough out. Um, and they get the Bears, unfortunately, two of the next of the games. But I mean, big time players show up in big time games. I think I think Galladay will show up. I think the the Lions will get their stuff together. My confidence level with the Lions is at a medium to low. They're falling into the low because I think they're making changes that they're preparing for next season. I don't want to say they're mailing it in this season, but things seem a little bit confused. And breaking news: they just fired their special teams coordinator, Joe. Mar- Marciano, Joe Marciano. What is Joe Marciano? Is a cherry. Joe Marciano. So they, that's it for the special teams, which is I think is another part of that team that needed to improve. So it's like they're making moves to improve now. They're making some moves to improve later. I think they might get it together. I'm still a buy on Galladay for rest of season, although I wouldn't overpay too much. Check your waiver wire for Theo Riddick. He's back in action. Good PPR day. Ten points. Solid PPR floor. Uh, and hopefully gets more involved as they hopefully phase out LeGarrette Blunt. So that's that's a guy to look for. Panthers and Buccaneers. <laughs> so this was funny. Uh, when I looked up the Buccaneers schedule in Google, the autocomplete filled it out as Botchamania for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Buccaneers that's and right. Botchamania. That's the, that's the new word for having to watch the rest of the Bucs schedule. <laughs> So we've been saying it weeks. Tampa is stupid. Tampa is stupid. I don't know what they're doing. What was this fake punt action, Jason? Hey, listen, you're. Uh, I didn't like the call, uh, especially where they were. But the, you're down twenty one points already before the end of the half. Like, what are you? What are you gonna do? Like, you have to show to your fans you're at least still trying, right? <laughs> I don't. It didn't look like they were trying very hard on defense, and I guess that's what we've been seeing. Maybe not, not no effort, but maybe just lack of skills. This team, we know exactly what we get. I think uh, you play your players against the Bucks, and you feel better about the Bucks skill players for the most part with Fitzmagic in, because he's just gonna go for it. So, <laughs> garbage time or not, he's gonna go for it. Yeah, there's. A, I'm looking at the Bucks schedule coming up, and there's a lot of get right games for a lot of teams. <laughs> <laughs> Tampa the Redskins are going to get right the yeah. Giants are going to get right the 49ers are going to get right the Panthers are going to get right again <laughs> I mean it's concerned about uh, Mike Evans this week only one catch on 10 targets for only 16 yards very surprising to me the targets were there uh, That that's that's the stat I looked at was was he targeted and he was targeted 10 times I'll, he had a bad game uh, Fitzpatrick had a bad game and I say he had a bad game in context of he had a much better game in the second half, but Evans is getting the targets. That's as long as he's getting targeted, I'm okay with it. Yeah, pretty much all the skill positions for the Bucks, minus Adam Humphreys and OJ Howard, had had rough days. Deshaun Jackson 
missed him on a wide open deep pass by about three yards. Uh, like we talked about, Evans didn't have a good game. Chris Godwin was only two for 40. So it was just one of those games where Adam Humphreys had a day. I think a lot of it had to do, too, with the, like Carolina's front seven is pretty good. Their secondary is not great, but if their front seven can put pressure on a quarterback, like that's what I saw. I didn't see Fitz having a lot of time to locate his receivers. I think that's why you saw Humphreys have a good day. I think that's why you saw tight end have a good day. Uh, but D. Jackson Evans just didn't have quality passes coming their way. But in terms of the Panthers, uh, people are going to be talking about Samuel and that big cross field double cut back flip de doo and Lukey Lou move to get into the end zone. And DJ Moore completely frustrating and failing us this week. So what to do about these two? Well, so DJ Moore was just game scripted out of the game out of the thing the right away. Like they got up by thirty points before you could blink, and then you didn't have. Same with Cam Newton; you, you, they didn't have to do anything. Right. They just kind of dumped it off to CMC and and let him do his thing. I have high confidence in the Panthers going forward. I think they're going to have a strong finish to their season. Buccaneers again; it's like garbage time. You're not looking to win games, but you're going to get fantasy points out of them, I think. Let's talk about the Redskins because the Falcons beat up on the Redskins. And so the big thing with the Redskins to me, and you, and you say they got a good enough running back. I agree. Adius have, have been having a career year at his age. He's looking great. I am selling Peterson immediately for two reasons. Upcoming schedule, they face after the Bucks, the Texans, the Cowboys, the Eagles. The, the, the Giants, then the Jags, the Titans, and the Eagles to finish out the season. So out of eight remaining games, right? One, two, four, six, eight. Uh, six of those are against very, very strong run defenses. And they just put on injured reserve uh, two guards and just signed two new guards. So that offensive line, uh, and a new tackle as well. So that offensive line is going through major changes. And it's... Last year, this was what happened with the Redskins. This is why they couldn't move the ball on the ground. The offensive line was constantly injured, constantly changing. This is a recipe for destruction for a running game and for Adrian Peterson's value. Change my mind. I can't change your mind. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, same here. Listen, I'm not selling AP yet. I want to get at least one more game from him. And and it would definitely be nice to get it – a good game out of him against Tampa because I, I think people are going to look at the stats in this game and, and look at the upcoming schedule and be like, I don't know if he's going to, you know, is he falling off his age? whatnot? If he goes out against the bucks and has a really good game, I think that helps your case to, to sell him. I think it'll increase his value a little bit. See, I think that is the value you sell him with that. You say, look, he gets right. the bucks next week, get him now or don't get him. Yeah. And I agree. I, I think part of the package of selling him is you tell you tell them, hey, you're not going to get a better game than the Bucks next week, and you need that game, bye weeks, whatever is going on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, people are going to be looking at Maurice Harris, and they're going to be looking at the fact that Richardson is now on IR, that Crowder hasn't been, I don't know, where he is, on vacation. Vernon Davis and Jordan Reed aren't doing a whole heck of a lot to be. So Maurice Harris is going to catch people's eyes as the wide receiver to look at. Ten receptions for 124 yards. Is he on your waiver list? I mean, there's nobody else. Yeah, on a on a week where there's not a lot of talent out there, I like Morris Harris. So doing a little reading on him, they were really high on him in the preseason. Fans there, you know, they fans everywhere are always clamoring for the the preseason darling, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes that actually hits. Fans have been clamoring to see a little more of Morris Harris, especially with all these injuries. So he's somebody I'd buy at least on short term if you if you're looking for somebody. I'll, I, I'm willing to take a flyer on him. Uh, you gotta love the fact that he caught ten of his uh, twelve targets. I don't know if you're gonna have to use a waiver claim to get him. Uh, if you have a high waiver claim, I would not waste it on him. That's good advice. Don't waste a waiver claim on this guy. But if he's there afterwards, he's worth the look. Keep in mind, Alex Smith is his quarterback, and Alex Smith is not an aggressive down the field guy. But they do face some beatable secondaries. 
uh, coming up in the next few weeks. So he's worth a look if you're hurting. Uh, Coleman to me is a must start every week now. I don't care. He's sometimes great, sometimes not great in terms of yardage, but he's scoring. Ito Smith, I mean, you guys, we've been talking about him for weeks and weeks now. I was never really like impressed with what I saw in terms of a running back, but he is getting in the end zone and they're using him in the red zone. So he's almost a must start flex from now on on a high power offense. Oh yeah, especially considering they've got the Browns next week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I like him against the Browns next week. Uh, we want to say congratulations to Julio Jones. Got himself a touchdown finally. Good job, buddy. Good job. Was that oh, his man, first? They, was that his first of the they, year? First yes, it was. since like week fourteen of last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he they celebrated like they actually didn't uh, lose to the Patriots after being down twenty eight <laughs> or up twenty eight to three at halftime. When he scored a touchdown. Oh, Julio, why didn't you have a phone under the under the field goal post or something? He, something he, planned. He didn't think he was going to score. <laughs> something planned. He, 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 was, he wasn't prepared. He's like, I haven't scored in so long. I'm not scoring this week. Oh, the hilarious. first, the first like, seven weeks this year, he probably had something great planned. And then this week he was just like, screw it. He's just screw yep. it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not taking my props to this game. Forget it. Oh man! No, he, nice he, he he pulled the old uh, Barry Sanders, just flipped the ball to the ref and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> just disgusted that, that it took him this long to get into the end zone. Man, I hope he gets a couple of more this season because people spent a high draft pick on him, and uh, they've been getting the yardage and the PPR score. But that touchdown really is—it's just nice to see Julio score. All right, the Steelers and the Ravens. What was surprising to me was that Willie Sneed has finally kind of emerged as the go-to PPR guy. I really thought Crabtree was going to bounce back this week. I still have high hopes for Crabtree for the rest of the season, um, liking all the matchups. And, and John Brown, I mean, they both had pretty poor games this week. A lot of this, to me, falls on Flacco, though. Yeah, I, Flacco played terrible. I think the rest of us are all just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting for Lamar Jackson to take that job. Flacco just is flat out missing wide open guys, just peripher- peripherally. He's just not seeing the field. So he locks on one or two guys. Lamar Jackson was so open on one play for a touchdown in this game, it looked like the Raiders were playing against him. There was just like, he had 20 yards in every direction where nobody was near him. And he threw it underneath and incomplete to nobody. If Lamar Jackson ends up starting a few games towards the end of the season, who on that offense in terms of other fantasy players gets a bump up in value? I would say Alex Collins for sure, just because I love running backs that are tied to running quarterbacks. Um, I think John Brown gets a slight uptick. I think I think Crabtree gets an uptick as well. I think the odd man out is going to be Willie Sneed, huh. and maybe that's just because I'm not a fan of Willie Sneed. Um, but I just I think Crabtree and John Brown are the two that would get the uptick. Well, so I uh, Alex Collins in the running game maybe, but I don't know if anybody does. We haven't seen enough of Lamar Jackson in to say that he's going to be an accurate quarterback down the field. He was the guy they said that needed the most work before he got to start of all these quarterbacks. And, you know, maybe he comes in and just gets it, but I don't buy that just because uh, he's different than Flacco, he's going to be good. But I think the ability to scramble and to extend plays with his legs helps the wide receivers, where Joe Flacco is just so immobile. All right, well, we'll see what happens with them. And if we get the word that Jackson's starting, we'll reevaluate some of those players. But I think you guys are pretty spot on there. Let's talk about, oh, my God, the big news, Le'Veon Bell. Okay, so he left Miami. End of story. Wow. End of story. Didn't report yet to the Steelers. Shut up about Le'Veon Bell. Shut up. I don't think he plays this year. If he does, I think he throws that offense into a, a weird tailspin. Connor is grooving right now. And if you start taking his... If you take him completely out, fine, whatever. But if you do some sort of split and kind of work Lev back in, I think both of them are not as valuable, not nearly as valuable. But just shut up about Le'Veon Bell. We'll just be done with it until he actually shows up to the team and puts on a uniform and actually steps onto the field and actually gets a ball in his hand, please. Texans and Broncos. So the Texans are on a six-game winning streak. Yay for my team, but they've had a lot of good luck. Denver special teams lost this game for them. Both good defensive plays, I think, going out throughout the season. If you can get a piece of these defenses, uh, they're both good for you. 
Guys, talk to me about uh, Demarius Thomas and how he fit in the big revenge game. What did you see out of him? Well, since I didn't get to watch the game, not too much. All right. Uh, <laughs> but three for 61, I mean, listen, it's respectable yards on three passes. They're going to have to throw it to him because they don't have a lot else. So I don't mind uh, Demarius Thomas going forward. It's nice to have somebody on the other side that, that – uh, is as good as DeAndre Hopkins is. So it's not like he's going to be seeing a lot of double coverage or the number one cornerback anytime soon. I'm, I'm not sure what to think really of DT there yet. We, we just haven't seen enough. Yeah. Both these, team, both these teams have a bye in week 10 here. So um, we're going to have to wait a week to see any more of DT. We're going to have to wait a week to see any more of Cortland Sutton, who I think a lot of people expected would just step in and be a superstar. Not so much this week. Do you guys see better things in the future for Cortland Sutton? Because he was a number one waiver pick for a lot of people last week. He's still the number two on that team in, in the passing game. Um, I, 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 I like I like a lot, Emmanuel Sanders a lot more. We got to remember Cortland Sutton's still a rookie. Yeah. And as much promise and as much upside as we want to believe in him, we got to remember he's a rookie. And and we're spoiled a little bit because I think a lot of times. We look at these guys coming out, and we look at what happened with the 2014 class. And even though it was, you know, four years ago, we're still holding these guys to this high expectation that they just can't live up to. We got to remember that that class wasn't, you know, a normal NFL wide receiver class. I mean, there's some surefire Hall of Famers that came out of that class. And coming into this season, I don't think there was anybody who you could say this is probably going to be a future Hall of Fame wide receiver. It's his first week in this role without DT. I like him better after the bye week, even though it's up against the Chargers, who have been playing pretty decent defense. Mm. Uh, but I like him coming out of the bye week uh, with a little more time as the number two than I liked him this week anyway. Yeah. I like, actually, I like, uh, I'm going to mess up his name, Hurman. Hurman? Tight end for the Broncos. I Tight like, end. I like yeah. him coming out of this bye week, going to the Chargers, because the Chargers are not very good. And there's a lot of teams this year that are not very good at defending the tight end, the Broncos being one of them. But the Chargers just gave up uh, quite a game to Nick Vanette, I think. Was uh, was he the guy? Yeah, quite a game to Nick yeah. Vanette this week. So you could – I mean, Herman definitely put together a great statistical game. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people saw it coming, but he may repeat for one more week uh, in week 11. After that, you might you might be able to spot start him if you're streaming tight ends throughout the season, because it looks like he's got some trust. He's just not going to be a super safe start for you. But Foreman, so Bill O'Brien is being coy and secretive about when are we going to reactivate him, if we reactivate him. But he is eligible after the bye, I believe, to be playing. So you stashed him on him on your IR. I don't know what his role is coming back because they just used Alfred Blue 15 times this week and Lamar Miller 12 times. So I don't know where Foreman falls in. I've been saying it all year long. I We've never seen anybody come back from an Achilles injury and be the player they were before that. I mean, Jimmy Graham had this injury. It took him almost two full years to come back, and he's not the Jimmy Graham that we knew prior to this injury. Um, we've seen people in basketball get this injury and never play another game because they just don't have it. Um, we loved the talent of Foreman prior to the injury. I'm super, super skeptical about how he performs this year and he really even going into next year coming off this injury. See, and, you, and I agree with you about not returning from that injury. People don't return from that injury with the same quickness, the same acceleration off the line. Um, and it certainly hurt, hurt Arian Foster going back to another Texans running back who had that injury. It hurt him when he came back. But his game, to me, wasn't the same as Foreman. His game was quick cuts, sharp off the line, agility. Foreman, to me, is more of a, let's get this boy rolling downhill and just let him plow through people. So I don't know if the injury is going to affect his game as much. I just don't know where he fits into this team. So he's LeGarrette Blunt. Yeah, he's a younger, stronger, tougher LeGarrette Blunt. So maybe he's just straight goal line. Maybe he's red zone goal line kind of guy. 
Well, so where he fits is when they put him in and he outplays Lamar Miller. He can do it, right? I mean, you that's know? the thing. I, I don't mean, that, think he will. That's the problem. It's, it is not hard to outplay 12 for 21, 2 for 27. I'm just saying. No, it, it's not. You're absolutely right. But Foreman wasn't a pass catcher to begin with. So you can scratch the pass catching off with him. And I, I, like I, I listen, said, run I think forward and fall back, down. I think any running back given half a chance can do two for 27. I'm just saying Not Lamar Derek Miller, uh, other than the last two weeks, has done nothing all season, and he continued that this week. And if he continues that next week or, you know, after their bye week, um, it's not hard to replace two, 12 for 21. It's just not. So, like, injury be damned, I'm pretty sure you could probably get 12 for 21 out of one of us if we really tried hard enough. <laughs> that That is true, but Lamar Miller can catch the ball, and Foreman has not shown that he could ever do that. And at least with Miller back there, that keeps the defense a little bit honest because Miller can come out the backfield and catch the ball. Where when the Garrett Blunt lines up in the backfield, you know exactly what's coming. He's not going to pass the ball, so you, the defense can read that. They're, they're, that's what they do. Uh, it, it just he as bad as Lamar Miller has played this season outside of two games, he still gives you more options on the offense than you're going to get with Foreman. But I really like the Texans' upcoming schedule for the rest of the season. I think this team could continue to improve. They're going to win, I think, a few of these games, if not a lot of them. Uh, but it's going to be mostly throwing offense. So that, again, adds to my trepidation about the running game. Let's move on to the Chargers and the Seahawks. We've got to finish up these games. Once again, the Seahawks line, it was, it was bad. We knew it was bad. They showed up again. But Russell Wilson did his heroics. He brought his team to the comeback, but they couldn't do it. Uh, we're going to talk about Mike Davis and Chris Carson. I think uh, Mike Davis, if he's on waivers, you grab him? Yeah, yeah I, I would, especially with Carson's injury and Rashad Penny not being very good. And we talked about this before the show, about learning Pete Carroll ease. So what's going to happen this <laughs> week is is Pete Carroll's going to come out and say, yeah, Chris Carson, all good. He'll be active next week. What that means is that it's a Mike Davis game. Or maybe... If he says Mike Davis looks good, he's going to be our starter. Then go start Rashad Penny. Probably <laughs> you got to do the opposite. <laughs> you got to do the opposite of whatever Pete Carroll says. Uh, Doug Baldwin finally catching a couple of balls, getting some yards. Not excited that David Moore dropped two touchdowns. What I was excited that they did look for him in the end zone to score, but he let me down. I was high on the guy last week in terms of what he looked like as a pass catcher, and kind of failed me this week. Uh, I might stick with him on my bench for one more week. Guys, are you looking at Nick Vanette if you're streaming tight ends? No, it's because it was Dixon. It was so like Dixon I, I last like week, it. and this week it's Vanette. It's like I don't know who you can trust. And that's that's what I was gonna say. It's like coming into this game, I really liked that Dixon. I thought he would get in the end zone, and it turned out it was Nick Vanette. And next week we'll like Vanette, and it'll be Ed Dixon with the big game. It's just I think it's gonna be just. Whatever each week there. You're, you're not going to have any type of consistency at all. For the Chargers side, this was another Tyrell Williams touchdown, another not so like involved in terms of passing, but the guy's scoring for what, three weeks, four weeks in a row now? I don't, he's, he's flex worthy. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's tough because it's touchdown dependent and, you know, at, at any given moment, it could go away. F you know, let, let's say like, Julio Jones, where it's gone away since week 14 of last year until now. So, like, if if you're looking at guys that are touchdown dependent for all their points, it's hard to start those guys. Yeah. Man, if you're at a pickle, though, and you need a winning game, and you got that one flex spot where you're like, okay, I got to put a home run guy in, he might be worth the risk. Like, his his the reward, I think, is worth the risk with this guy. So, coming up, Against the Raiders, I think you play them. Uh, against the Broncos, right. I think you can play them. Against the Cardinals, I think you can play them. Uh, a lot of the upcoming schedule, I think you can play Tyrell Williams with some level of confidence because I feel good about this team. Um, they're definitely hitting their stride in terms of where they're at in the season. Eckler has disappeared for a couple of games, and we talked about him a little bit ago. Is he worth holding on to if you're not the Melvin Gordon owner? 
Well, so I think so only because we've talked about going out and getting handcuffs even if they're not yours because at some point, you know, if Melvin Gordon does go down, you now have the starter for a high-powered offense. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm holding Eckler. I, I never actually viewed him as a running back two, which is what he was performing as. I always viewed him as a high-value handcuff. It, well, and you mentioned it before, Steve. Raiders, Broncos, Cardinals, Steelers. Yeah, lots of play, lots of playable games for a guy like Eckler. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Like, I might actually, like, I might. I sat him this week because I thought Seahawks defense can put up a good game. I'm thinking about starting him the next couple of weeks because the same thing you said, George. Like, if you're like, you, it's Melvin Gordon's show, but. If they get out to a good lead with the Ravens against the Raiders, the Cards, the Broncos, why not give Melvin Gordon a break? Why not get Eckler some work? He might have that RB two value, that high flex value, coming up here towards the end of the season. I wouldn't get rid of him. Saints and the Rams. This was a this was the game of the week. I think a lot of people really expected this one to be good, and it was good. It delivered. This was a great game for Drew Brees, and we talked about this last week, where we were saying the Saints defense is getting better. They're going to rotate down to that running game. But we were anticipating a bit of a setback for Breeze. He didn't show it this week at all. They threw Thomas. I I told you to trade for him last week, guys. I told you to buy Thomas 211 yards and a touchdown. And the Joe Horn celebration. Ben Watson scored. Traycon Smith scored. Everybody scored. Oh, boy. Ingram, though. Nine for 33 and a fumble. Yeah, that that fumble killed him. Uh, I don't, I don't. Rec- so I watched this game, and I don't recall him getting another opportunity after that fumble. That's what happens. If he did, if he did, he didn't get very many. That's what happens with him. Peyton is Peyton is never forget kind of guy. Like when Ingram screws up, Peyton benches him. That's because Peyton doesn't like him. <laughs> well, it's hard too, though, because you watch, and I know you can't you can't keep Kamara out there all the time, but. It's just like when you put the ball in Kamara's hands, good things happen. And everybody else, I don't know, man. It It's hard for me to take Kamara off the field or watch them take Kamara off the field to put it in Ingram's hands. He's a good running back, but he's just not as talented. Agreed. I agree. Uh, you might be able to start Ben Watson. Like He's been kind of on or off this season in terms of startability for streaming tight ends. But uh, you might be able to give him some run when the Saints play the Bengals uh, and the Falcons, maybe, and the Bucks, So he's going to be a spot start for me for the rest of the season. Uh, Patriots and Packers, a little more breaking news. Uh, the Patriots are looking like Sony Michelle is likely to return this Sunday against the Titans. Uh, just needs a good week of practice, so back on track. But good God, Cordero, Cordero Patterson, <laughs> new running back. I mean, he looks like a he looks like a beast. Just when so, we think so we what, just when, when we proving, think we have clarity, it, like okay, there's only one guy, so he's that's the Patriots running back to start. Hey, guess what? <laughs> Here comes a wide receiver. Like, yeah, it, Cordell Patterson is really proving the fact that running back does not matter in the NFL outside <laughs> of a a slim few. You know, Todd Gurley's, Kamara's, uh, you know, Ezekiel Elliott, your, your, your Barkley's. You know, outside of a small handful, the running back position really does not matter. See, I, I disagree there. I think running back doesn't matter on teams like the Patriots, where where they do this all the time, where they have guys that play wide receiver and defensive back in the same game at the same time. Like, I I think it's a it's a very Patriots thing, but we have a lot of teams who don't have a guy at running back couldn't just throw some random wide receiver in there and do this. I mean, it gives them another weapon out the backfield. It, I what, mean, listen, scary, James what, White scares is very me for, good coming up. Yeah, but it scares me for Sony. Yeah, I was well. So I'm going to say, like, I'd be super excited to pick this guy up, have him start him as a wide receiver, and then watch all the running back points roll in. But, <laughs> but. but uh, with Sony Michelle coming back, that kind of kills it, right? I think if Sony Michelle comes back healthy, if then it, Cordell loses a lot of that value. I don't know yeah. if it does. I think it splits it up more. I'm worried. I'm worried. I, maybe I don't think, but I'm worried that it splits it up more. Because you worried it goes back to a three a three running back share there. Why not? So you you always ask us questions. Let me ask you one. Are you picking up Cordell Patterson? No, no. 
Nope. For that reason alone, it's because I don't I don't see any clarity. In fact, it got more muddy. The situation just got more more confused for me. On the Packers side. Okay, so the news in terms of injury wise for the Packers, uh, Geronimo Allison looking like he's going to have core surgery. We were talking about this before the show. It's likely like a sports hernia kind of thing. Um, don't know how serious it's going to be or how long he's going to be out. But if you haven't picked up, uh, MVS yet, get him, uh, another good PPR game for him. 100 yards, broke the 100 yards, only three receptions, missed a couple of catches though. And you could see Aaron Rodgers was getting frustrated. With these guys missing catches. Yeah, I mean, it, it's what happens when you don't, when you're using rookies, you're using young guys, you know, they're not exactly where you want them to be. They don't have the same, you know, he can't just look over there and, and let the guy know right away that it's going to be a back shoulder. You know, it, it, it's tough for Aaron because he's used to having guys he's played with for a little while and he doesn't have that right now. Yeah, I think going forward, there's nothing but good things going to be for MVS. I mean, I, I, I love what I've seen. We've seen a couple of uh, big games from MVS when Allison was out with a, a, another injury. Uh, he's definitely worth a high waiver claim, in my opinion. I, I If I had the number one or number two waiver claim, I would definitely waste uh, – not waste, but I would spend it on this guy. That is it for those teams. Would teams that were on a buy, just go through them real quick. Anything that happened over the week, the Eagles picked up Golden Tate. I said earlier, I'm not sure how he fits in there. Guys, how do you see Golden Tate fitting in there? And how do other players' values change on the Eagles? I think he comes in and takes, man, why can't I remember his name now? Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, there it is. I think he comes in and takes the Aguilar role. He's, he's Aguilar, but better. So high target. Maybe not a lot of uh, air yards, but he's a PPR monster, and he's just better at it than Nelson Aguilar is. My, my only trepidation with, with Tate is him and uh, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard, they're all the played that same short passing game role. So I think it could affect Ertz. It probably will affect uh, Goddard more than Ertz. Um, I think it helps Wentz, and I think it helps uh, – Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah, I agree. I think it helps the passing game. We've said it for weeks now. It's not a running team. They can't seem to find anybody that they can count on in terms of running the ball, so it's just going to be more passing. I'm not worried about Ertz. I agree with you. It might hurt Goddard a little bit. I don't think it hurts Alshon, though. In fact, I think it helps him. I think it clears out things a little bit. He's a big play guy, big target in the red zone. Tate's never been known to be a red zone target, so, yeah, he's more of a possession guy. I don't know if I'd start him right away. I might give him a week or two to get used to the team before I started him. The uh, Jaguars news for net is doing some individual drills. So hopefully he gets back on the field next week. The Giants, no news. They stink. Well, Loletta, I think Loletta, um, oh, ran right. into a cop car. Yes. I think he, I think he like called in a, a, a favor from the NYPD. I think he roofied I think him. He, I, so I think Loletta looked at the possibility of having to start behind that line and said, screw it, I am driving towards the cop car. I'm going to run into this police officer. <laughs> this is way better than than uh, defensive lines hitting me over and over and over again. I'd rather be in jail and get sacked ten times. <laughs> yes, I can, I, you know what? I believe it. I believe it. The Bengals are going to be without A.J. Green for at least two games until he sees a doctor again about the foot. So, uh I mean, Tyler Boyd's value goes up. Gio Bernard is back to practice. John Ross also returned. I think if you want to grab a flyer for the time A.J. Green's out, I think it'd be the tight end, to be honest. I think I'd grab Uzoma off waivers again. Uh, do you guys Are you guys reaching out to John Ross or, or Uzoma? John Ross has not shown us anything ever. Like he's had a couple, he had a couple touchdowns early in the season. He does have more touchdowns this year than uh, Julio Jones, so I guess there's that. But uh, I'm not. I'm not reaching out for Ross Usama. I'm, he's going to be another one of those matchup dependent tight ends. I would almost prefer Gio Bernard over any of those other guys. Like if he's not rostered, I'd grab him. If he comes back healthy, he may see an increase in in passes, and that's kind of his thing. Uh, I think I'd value him more than Ross or Uzoma. Colts Mac injury report. Don't think it's serious. Monitor it. You know, the guy's got a history of injury, but um, you're starting Marlon Mack if you got him. 
And the cards, I don't have any news about them. So, again, no news is good news for them. Monday Night Football, Titans and Cowboys are facing off right now. We're going to see how Amari Cooper looks in his new home. And we're going to take a look at this Titans defense. I think they might put up a good fight tonight. They've been pretty good on defense. And Derrick Henry scored a touchdown, George. One yarder. There yep. you go. That's all I needed. What Once a that game. Nice. Uh, also, also in this game, Amari Cooper has a touchdown. No shit. Yeah. Excellent. He's uh, two for 15 with a touchdown. Wow. And I do have I do have to say, Corey Davis has six targets, four receptions, 42 yards. Okay. He's giving me hope. Everybody's coming <laughs> back to life here on these two teams. Excellent. All right, so... I mean, geez, look at this game. Uh, look at this game after it's played, and decide whether you want to spend a high waiver pick on Amari Cooper. I might be convinced. I gotta watch the tape. Let's talk about waiver wire targets right now. Every week, guys, we talk to you about a couple of names that we like on the waiver wire targets. We have been recommending guys two, sometimes three weeks before they actually go off because we watch the games real closely. We try to see where the trends are going. Who do we got this week on the waiver wire, guys? Uh, will you just start with Jason? We'll start with George this time. Who are you looking at in terms of waivers? Anybody we haven't talked about yet that really popped out to you? If uh, Elijah McGuire is still on your waiver wire, he's he's somebody I'm looking to go get. Um, we, we talked a little bit earlier about MVS. Um, I'm willing to take a gamble coming off a of bye. Josh Adams uh, I'm willing to to stash him. Not that I'm willing to trust him or anything like that. We we know that the uh, Eagles are a pass first offense, but he looks like to be the best of those backs. So he's somebody I don't I don't mind stashing. Well, so I was going to say Maurice Harris. We did talk about him earlier. I wanted to reiterate that he looked pretty good, mm-hmm. and I and I like him going forward, especially in this this upcoming game. We talked about Jeff Howerman. I believe that's how you say it. Uh, I want to mention if Jack Doyle is still out there because they were on a bye. I like Jack Doyle going forward. Yep. Uzuma, but, he's he's. I think he's um, CBS. He's thirty two percent owned. So listen, AJ Green is down. We talked about it earlier. Somebody's got to get the passes. We like Geo a lot. Um, he might be on your waiver wire. So the owner might have dropped him during Bipocalypse. So if he's there, pick him up. Um, but Uzuma. I'm not willing to go out and trust Uzuma, but logically somebody's got to get some of those passes that AJ Green was getting. And with Tyler Boyd now seeing number one uh, cornerback coverage, you know it might be Uzuma. Well, might- and, and like you mentioned, Steve, I, I'm uh, uh, if Geo was out there, he's probably been dropped because he hasn't been playing. Okay. So I like him. And- you, might, you might find uh, you might find Moncrief on waivers because of buys. For the Jags, I like him. Cordell Maybe. Patterson, see if he's stash him. And uh, Christian Kirk might be out there because of a bye week. That's true. And uh, you could you could have worse players than Christian Kirk on your team. Guys, if Derrick Henry's out there on waivers, it's stupid. I know. I dropped him. I hate him. I don't want to own him. But there are some leagues where I'm grabbing him. I don't know why I have this feeling that they may have figured some things out on the bye week. I'm going to watch Monday Night Football from end to end to see what I see in terms of that offensive line and how they use him. But if possible, it might he might have some value later in this season. It's possible they figured some things out. If they did, he could score you touch he he might score a couple of touchdowns. Let's just put it that way. He might have a couple of touchdown games where he's usable. Out of all the guys that are on waivers in terms of running backs right now, he probably has some upside. Probably not the best, but oh, and my my best pickup advice this week: the New York Jets. They get to play at home against the Bills. Defense, yeah, yeah. We don't talk much about defense on this show, but that is a good one. <laughs> they have as good a chance to get a pick six as they do to allow a touchdown by air. Chargers too. Chargers have some tasty matchups in terms of defense, and they're playing better defense. I completely forgot to talk about Kyle Long and the Bears when we talked about the Bears. Out, I don't. I forget if he's out for the season or out indefinitely. I think he's out indefinitely. Um, that's a huge hit to that Bears offensive line. And when I was really high on buying Jordan Howard previously, that has gone down. My excitement has gone down a little bit because of this injury because that guy was really the leader. And the not the most athletic guy on that line, but he was certainly the centerpiece of that. So that that line may struggle 
Um, kind of like they, the Redskins. They, they, they placed him on uh, injured reserve. Is he on injured reserve? So, yeah, that's yep. a really big hit for that line. Um, you it, it might, you are eating into my cell high. I'm sorry. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Anyway. <laughs> uh, let's jump over to the trading floor. Guys, talk to me about who you're buying low, who you're selling high. This might be one of the last opportunities with trade deadlines coming up in fantasy to really make some moves. So, Jason, who are you buying for the rest of the season? Who are you getting off the team before the playoffs start? So I have uh, my buy and sell are the two running backs from the same team. I'm buying Cohen and selling Howard. Um, and just because this game lined up perfectly for Howard, he didn't do a ton with it. He got his touchdown. Uh, not a lot of not a lot of room to run there. The team does look better offensively when Cohen's on the field. They just didn't have to do it with the defense scoring and the team they played against. In the last two weeks, it's kind of been that same way where the Jets and the Bills, you play against the Jets and the Bills, you don't have to do a lot offensively, especially if you have a defense like the Bears do. So Cohen, Cohen's been out of the game the last couple of weeks, so he's had two weeks where he hasn't been great. I think you can turn that into a buy low. And with, uh, with Howard getting a couple touchdowns in the last couple weeks, I think you can turn that into a sell high. George? All right, the guy the guy I'm buying is Keenan Allen. He was drafted within the first two rounds in most drafts this year. Uh, PPR monster. He had, he, listen, he's been solid all year long. The, the problem with Keenan Allen is he's only got one touchdown on the year. So you expect that that, that will change with that offense. Um if I can, I tried to make a couple of moves earlier today to get Keenan Allen in a couple of different leagues, and I couldn't, and I'm going to continue to work on it. But Keenan Allen is definitely my buy high guy or uh, buy low guy right now. Um, the person I'm trying to sell right now is James White and Leonard Fournette or TJ Yeldon, or if you have both of them, sell them both together. With Sonny Michelle coming back, the emergence of Cordell Patterson, like like we stated earlier, I like James White, but that backfield is just going to get more muddy and muddy and muddy. And the way James White has been performing thus far, if I could get something that's a lot clearer backfield and a lot more solid back there for him, I absolutely would do it. And same thing is what I'm thinking about with the Jaguars running back. You got Yeldon, Fournette, you got Carlos Hyde. Who knows how that backfield is going to shake out? So if you can, if you can unload Fournette, knowing that he's practicing and he's expected to come back, I think his value has has crept up a little bit, and you might be able to get something decent for him, a good wide receiver too, or something like that. Why don't we ever trade, George? I would love to buy the guys you are selling right now. I would love to get Fournette <laughs> and White on my team for the playoff push. White's been the only consistent part of that backfield all season, and he's I the only he's the only healthy part of that backfield all yeah, season. But he's just good in both aspects of the game. I don't see him slowing down. I mean, he's the he's the veteran there as well. Like they're going to go to him, they trust him, and I would love to get Fournette for the push. If because yeah. only because they've held him out for so long, I feel like they're waiting. And that's the other guy I didn't talk about. Kiki QT came out and said he's waiting until he's a hundred percent before he comes back. I feel like they're doing the same thing with Fournette because you know why destroy his season if he's not fully healthy? Uh, don't get him more injured. So man, I like that guy. If I could get him, so I'd get him. I. I- I pulled the trade off today. Uh, actually, it was earlier this morning. Did you trade Todd Gurley away? No, I did not. I traded okay, TJ Yeldon. I traded Leonard Fournette. And I traded Jordan Howard. And in return, I got Chris Thompson and Odell Beckham Jr. Even though I've been saying sell, 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 sell. I actually bought a share of him today because I needed another wide receiver. Uh-huh. Um, so, I mean... I think I got good return on it. I needed the wide receiver. I got Odell. Wasn't I'm, I'm not. I, if I can get a lot in return for Odell, I will. I could probably flip him for more than what I gave to get him. The guy that I traded him to was desperate for running backs. Um, but it's just I don't going down the stretch. I don't want to have to deal with backfields where there's three people back there and you don't know who's going to get what on which game. Fair enough. All right. Guys, if you have any questions about trading value and players in different trades, you want to get a hold of us directly, I'd say the easiest way to do it is go to our website, sleeperwire.com. Click the button, free advice. You can fill out a form. It goes right to our email. We we all talk about it in a group chat, and then we write you back. 
And uh, you can also, of course, call in on the live show. We do a live show every Wednesday called The Mail Sack. You call in and we answer your questions live. You can also send us questions through the Sleeper app and the Fantasy Life app that we answer on that show. And don't forget, everything we do, if we ever help you out, go to our GoFundMe page for our buddy Rob. He's fighting chronic Lyme disease. It's GoFundMe.com forward slash RobJR. Make a little donation. If we gave you some good advice, gave you some good waivers, gave you some good trade ideas, and you're winning some games with our help, we'd love to see a little a little, uh, a little, love on the other way. Give us a little donation to help our buddy Rob. If you want to reach us, go to the Sleeper app. You can find George at BFTGEO. You can find Jason at BFT. G D R M I L and me at S W Steve on the Fantasy Life app. Look for the Sleeper Wire chat room and the Break from the Grind chat room. You can find us on Twitter at Sleeper Wire Show. Tune into the Mail Sack on Wednesday. George, Jason, thanks for being on the Monday show once again. And uh, we'll talk to you guys after week 10. Good luck. <laughs>